MC Lobshire, the host of the Cash Ninja podcast and also the president and chief wealth and investment strategist of Producers Wealth, where we help our clients integrate cash flow banking, also known as infinite banking, with their business and investments. If you're interested in learning more about how we create strategies that integrate cash flow banking and investments to turbocharge them, you can access a video series at yourownbankingsystem.com. That's yourownbankingsystem.com. Welcome to the Cash Flow Ninja, the podcast sharing how to create income streams and manage, multiply, and protect your wealth in the new economy. Here is your host inside the dojo, MC Laubscher. Hello, Cashflow Ninjas. MC Lobster here, and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I have a great show for you today, and in today's show, we're going to look at how to inspire others through living your legacy. I'm joined in today's episode, and honored to be joined in today's episode, by Mr. Nelson Nash. Uh, Nelson is the discoverer and developer of the infinite banking concept and the author of Becoming Your Own Banker. Nelson remains a popular teacher and lecturer on the infinite banking concept through a dividend paying whole life insurance. A native of Georgia, Nelson received a BS degree in forestry from the University of Georgia in 1952. From 1954 to 1963, Nelson worked as a consulting forester in Eastern North Carolina. During more than 35 years of experience as a life insurance agent, Nelson worked with the Equitable Life Insurance Society of the United States and with The Guardian. Recognized for his high achievements, he was inducted uh, into the Hall of Fame as a member by Equitable, a chartered life underwriter and life member of the Million Dollar Roundtable. A pilot for 60 years, Nelson flew with the Army National Guard and earned a master aviator wings during his 30 years of military service. Nelson Nash is a national treasure, and I've been truly honored to learn from him and continue to learn from him. I interviewed him on episode 112, where we covered the infinite banking concept. And in today's show, we're going to talk about the lessons Nelson learned on his journey and the legacy he's leaving and living today. If you're interested in joining our investors group, you can go to cashflowninja.com forward slash investors group and fill out an application form to see if you're a good fit for our group. Are you having a hard time finding great investment properties? Unfortunately, the best deals are rarely found locally. Successful investing begins with the right properties in the right markets. Norada Real Estate provides everything you need to invest in the best deals across the United States. Our simple proven system will help you create real wealth and passive monthly cash flow. Learn how to find the best deals by downloading your free copy of The Ultimate Guide to Passive Real Estate Investing at noradarealestate.com. That's N-O-R-A-D-A realestate.com. Nelson, always a pleasure to connect and spend some time with you. Welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. I enjoy talking with you so very much. We've got to do more talking uh, in, in addition to these shows, okay? Absolutely. Lo love our time together and always have uh, fantastic conversations, history, economics, everything. So uh, we definitely have to do so, sir. Um, so I figured uh, in our conversation today, uh, there's, there's obviously this amazing journey that you've been on and uh, you've shared so much along the way and on your journey. So I figured a great place for us uh, and for our discussion today is to talk a little bit about certain concepts uh, and just their meaning in particular to yourself. And one concept that comes up quite a bit is wealth and what wealth truly means, because uh, it means different things to different people. Um, what does wealth mean to you? Well, on the uh, little video, the about 57 minutes called Banking with Life, there's about 13 different personalities talking from time to time, including yours truly. But the third one on there is uh, Paul uh, Cleveland. Uh, Paul Cleveland is a uh, professor at uh, Birmingham Southern University here, 
and he's Austrian uh, in, through and through in his uh, beliefs. Anyway, uh, Paul uh, says uh, money is not wealth. Wealth is goods and services. Uh, money is the medium of exchange whereby we do uh, our uh, obtaining wealth and uh, services. And uh, people need to know that because that's extremely important. They, they look at money as being wealth, and it's not. It's so true, and there's just so many, many parts of it, too. And, and one of the things that I love uh, about what you talk about, too, is, is that long-range thinking and mm -hmm. thinking of generations because that's part of, of being wealthy, too, is, is leaving a legacy and family and friends and soulful relationships and uh, studying and learning and, and grow it, growing yourself. Um, and then, as you mentioned, the goods and services play into that because – we're going, to need, we're going to need to be valuable and we're going to have to have those soulful relationships and provide value for others to exchange the goods and services, right? Absolutely. Uh, but uh, the, the problem out there is that people think, think that money is, uh, is wealth, but, uh, uh, and they concentrate on that particular thing. And so they don't read and study uh, and realize that, uh, relationships between people is much more valuable than anything else. Absolutely. And the, the, the big part of it too, I think in society and the messaging and so forth through the school systems and so forth, it's just so focused on money in particular that they don't understand that that is just a medium of exchange and a representation of value. Mm -hmm. uh, and in order to, to, to get that, you're going to, you're going to have to provide value, develop yourself, develop, relationships are not just not just transactions by the way you talked about uh family relationships and so forth you know we have three children uh girl boy girl uh we have 10 uh grandchildren five boys five girls we have uh nine great grandchildren and the 10th one is going to be showing up in the latter part of may so uh, we're repopulating the world <laughs> that's fantastic that's uh yeah i mean and that, and that's what uh, life is all about um one of the the things that that i'm very interested to learn is through your journey in life uh many many different uh, uh parts uh from uh yeah from from serving from be, uh, being trained as a forester to uh getting into the the life insurance business uh, discovering the infinite banking concept and so forth. What are some of the, the single greatest lessons that you've learned on your journey uh, that you would wish to share and pass on to not just your family, but, but uh, everyone out there and future generations? Well, as we talked before we, we started this recording, uh, we, uh, we saw, you see how evil uh, the banking system really is. Uh, bankers lend money that doesn't exist, and that's uh, not very nice. And uh, you got to have propaganda, and that's been done by the you know, public school system. Uh, but people don't understand that at all, and that's tragedy. So uh, what I'm trying to point out is that uh, this has been the burden on my heart uh, for many years, at least 35 uh, years, that uh, the banking function is in the hands of the wrong people. And uh, you don't get the, the uh, system changed uh, by top-down thinking. It's impossible. Uh, it's bottom-up. What you've got to learn to do is to learn how to secede from the system within uh, your own uh, uh, community of believers. And so uh, when you understand that life insurance policies with dividend-paying mutual companies uh, meet that uh, necessity, perfectly but uh, that's again not understood out there because the prop propaganda machine is still working big time and taking control and, and and reclaiming the banking function within your own life plays into that uh that spirit that this con this country had of independence of self-reliance uh about having control over your own life and, and and your own future and your your own destiny and when when you just mentioned that um 
in the past, uh, I would say in the past month, maybe this was at the end of October, there was a, there was a gentleman whose work that I've studied, John Taylor uh, Gatto. Oh, yes. Yeah, he recently yes. passed. So it just spurred that thought in my mind of how um, folks before the, the Industrial Revolution started and before the mm-hmm. factories and so started where, I mean, the American population were all shopkeepers and farmers and all folks, independent craftsmen. And there was this spirit of, of liberty and uh, self-reliance and uh, being just independent and being your being responsible to yourself. And it's kind of been weeded out. And what I love seeing, I kind of, and maybe, maybe, I'm, a, maybe I'm an ever optimist, but I see a lot of folks are waking in, in, in this new changing economy. They are becoming independent it again they are taking control of their own destiny so the the whole concept of reclaiming the banking function with your own and within your own life plays in really nicely to that too yes uh precisely uh now everybody does it. we don't have to have everybody doing this uh to the contrary uh in this hostile in uh financial or economic uh, uh environment uh you can live very well if you learn to be your a bank it totally that you don't use the bank for anything except checking accounts. That is all checking accounts is not uh, banking. That's accounting. Good grief. Uh, you know, that's one of the valuable things about being a forester that um, we had a lot of courses in classification. Uh, MC, if you don't classify things correctly to get go, you can get real trouble. You, mm-hmm. you, you get, you could get lost. You you classify things by the major characteristics, not incidentals. And when you get all that uh, uh, straight, uh, the object here of, of my book was becoming your own banker. Well, becoming, uh, that means that uh, it's a, an action and it, it's not something that you do overnight. And I, the last word, okay, infinite banking, you know, I use that word because the, the more you see, the more you see you didn't see. And there's no end to it. But again, it uh, when you get the banks out of your life totally, which uh, we uh, we have done, uh, we haven't seen a bank uh, in over 30 years except for checking accounts as a result of what I've been teaching and practicing what I've been teaching. Okay. Now, uh, here's another thing. I uh, was doing a seminar in Los Angeles, Thousand Oaks area. We got some publicity here recently. Now that, that's a high rent district. The sponsor there for the uh, seminar was Arkady Milgram, one of our practitioners. Now he's uh, only been in this country since 1989. He came here with only a hundred dollars in his pocket. They couldn't get. He couldn't take anything else out. He's done extremely well. Uh, but he didn't discover the life insurance uh, business until about nine years ago. Now, but uh, he had 25 Russians there and 20 of our USA types. And halfway through the seminar, uh, BMC, I'm telling the group how what a peaceful, stress-free way of life it is when you get the banks out of your life. And a bolt of lightning hit my feeble brain about that time. I looked down and I said, good grief to myself. Uh, what an opportunity. Here's a lady doctor from Russia. Uh, she's a, a, a neurologist. I'm going to pick her brain right in front of everybody. Uh, I have no idea what she will say. You know, she doesn't know me and I don't know her. Doctor, what part does stress play in medical maladies? Her answer, it all starts there. Then I asked the group, in the, your life and in the life of your peers, what is the biggest problem out there, the st- biggest stress factor? And the chorus came back, money. Well, uh, that's what becoming your own banker is all about, is realizing that uh, in a hostile uh, atmosphere, you can, uh, uh, you can CC it with, it for no, with no problem at all. And it's in an instrument that cannot possibly inflate the money supply. And so uh, these are the thoughts that I've been trying to get across during the years. But there's a doggone much nonsense talked out there. That it's, uh, people listen to the nonsense, and it's, it, it, it's not very good that they do so. So you understand the ongoing battle that we we'll always have 
uh, it's just the way that uh, life is, I guess. A lot of the noise that you talk about too, and one thing that you just said that was uh, so powerful and just triggered another thought yeah. is the about the importance of classifying things correctly. And part mm-hmm. of the noise is the confusion over what is savings, investment, mm-hmm. and speculation, right? Because people think that they're saving, but they're actually uh, most likely investing, and most of them are not even investing. They're just speculating. Absolutely. Now, on your journey, uh, you've had moments where you, um, it's kind of that, they call it aha moments almost, right? Where it just hits you, where you say, wow, I didn't realize that this was happening or look at this or you see something in a different light. Yep. When, it comes to, when it comes to life and money and the, the banking system and so forth, what were some of those biggest moments uh, on your journey? Well, I... Uh when I was in the life insurance business, see, I was with uh, uh, AXA, which is now, which AXA, which, which used to be Equitable Life of New York. Uh, I had a partner, uh, Lamar Phillips, and um, I remember very well that w- we were riding over to Aniston to see one of, one of our clients, and uh, I realized that uh, uh, people go through, businesses go through huge amounts of money, and uh, there's an awful lot of interest there. Well, that interest is really paid by the consumer. Consumers pay for everything. Well, I saw that the life insurance business and their teachings had it backward. And uh, that's why I have that little graph in my book there uh, where you put money in and it becomes a pro- property of the insurance company and they put it to work in various and sundry places. And one of those places can be you. And uh, I realize that your need for finance is greater than your need for death benefit. And if you would solve for the, the need for your finance and get the bankers out of your life, that uh, you, you created uh, a uh, microcosm within, the, within your own life and so forth. Now, what I have not told a lot of people at uh, MC is that uh, when I first uh, had this aha moment, and it was instantaneous that it, it happened. I tried to suppress it for at least two years because I said uh, uh, people would never believe it. And uh, But uh, 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 you're familiar with the Moses in the burning bush, right? Yes. Okay. Now, look, uh, Moses was uh, reared in the house of uh, Pharaoh. Uh, now, that's the epitome of top-down stuff right there. Uh, top-down education. Well, you know how he was banished uh, because of uh, various and sundry. Le- leave that alone. Just We're just going to concentrate on the fact that for 40 years he was out there tending sheep. And did you know sheep are not very good conversationalists? <laughs> so so uh, uh, he's t- uh, talk- God is talking with him. And um, he realizes that... Uh, all that stuff that I learned uh, was absolute nonsense. That uh, that stuff is it, it won't work, and he tried to suppress it. And uh, the the bush wouldn't uh, the burning bush would not go out. And then uh, when he finally uh, realized that he had to do something about it, he had all kind of excuses. But uh, finally, uh, God just commanded him. I guess is the best way to describe it. To uh, uh, you got a job to do, boy. Get with it. <laughs> Go get my people out of there. Out of there. <laughs> well, uh, so uh, I suppressed the idea of uh, becoming your own banker. Uh, I did not have it t- totally formulated at that particular point. But uh, finally, uh, it the, the, bur- the burning bush in my life would not go out. I saw that I had to do this. And that uh, go step out in faith and uh, teach people that are your clients on, and to anybody that you come in contact with. And so that's how it all got started. And uh, I was trying to uh, do a lot of it in small seminars with small, small groups. And uh, I would um, find 40 people that uh, I thought would be a uh, uh, interested in this, and maybe 20 of them were said that, uh, yeah, okay, we'll come. Now, I uh, would call them uh, about at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on the on the day of the seminar and say, uh, 
are, are you going to be there? And all 20 said, absolutely, yes. MC, do you know there are times when no one showed up? <laughs> I thought you'd enjoy that story. It's a great, great story. What were some of the most important people that you've studied? Uh, what were some of the mentors that have played the biggest roles in your life? Oh, without, without question, my uh, number one hero was Leonard E. Reed, the guy who started the Foundation of Economic Education back in uh, 1946. Uh, Henry Hazlitt was one of his co-founders, but... Uh, See, uh, I uh, f- graduated from college in uh, 1952 and uh, had to go on active duty with the Air Force for uh, two years because of, I was an ROTC student. That, that's one of the ways I worked my way through college. I paid for it all. I had uh, part-time jobs in addition to that. But um, anyway, so there were two years of the Air Force duty. And I was an aerial photo interpreter with SAC in March Air Force Base, California. All right. When I got out of the uh, uh, active duty, I went to eastern North Carolina to work with my oldest brother in forestry. I lived in a, a town uh, uh, about 12,000 people back in those days. It was 12,000. Well, it was, uh, it's Smithfield, North Carolina. It's the beginning of the coastal plain. Uh, uh, the uh, News River is uh, the uh, breaking point because between the coastal plain and the, and the Piedmont. Okay, uh, now uh, Smithfield is is the county seat of Johnston County. That's the second largest uh, back county in the in the world. Now. Don't know whether you know anything about tobacco or not, but uh, in the United States, it's heavily uh, regulated big time. Uh, you can only plant so much uh, tobacco. Well, uh, that it all depended upon how much uh, farmland you had. There's a formula that they had there. Well, every tobacco farmer will overplant naturally. Well, they had this army of guys that would go out to your place and uh, measure uh, how much uh, you had overplanted and said, you got to get rid of that. Well, uh, I came face to face with the mental paralysis that socialism causes. Uh, I couldn't believe my eyes. Why would people uh, behave that way? And it all had to do with the government programs that are out there that just totally control people's minds. And uh, I'm mouthing off at a social gathering at home with this radiologist about what I run into. And he says, sound like you need to read this book. Gave me Henry Hazlitt's Economics in One Lesson. And uh, less than 10 days, I've got it back in his hands with two questions. Uh, where you guys been hiding this stuff? And where, second question is, why did you hide it from me? And he says... <laughs> If you like what you uh, uh, read, get on this mailing list with this journal called The Freeman, by, put out by Foundation for Economic Education. Now, all you got to do is ask for it. Uh, now, uh, they're supported entirely by do- donations, but they will never ask you for money. Now, uh, if you haven't thrown some money at them in a year's time, they'll, they'll just take you off the mailing list. Well, the more I read, the better it got, and uh, I just, uh, it became an obsession since that time because uh, I've read more uh, Austrian stuff than uh, most P- most Austrian PhD. Uh, if you look at that uh, uh, reading list in my uh, website, uh, read all those books, and you have one PhD in, in Austrian economics and one PhD in history. Uh, there's no way that you can study economics without studying history. They're hand in glove. In fact, there are more history books there than there are on economics. So uh, anyway, I was particularly attracted to the writings of Leonard E. Reed. And uh, don't, are you familiar with him? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Okay. Now, he became my personal friend and mentor. I used to have him down to Birmingham every year. The lecture to a group of uh, 75 to 80 that I put together, man. We would never let him stay in a hotel. 
uh, he, we would farm him out and uh, so that these people could have personal contact with this guy. And so, uh, you know, um, my uh, son uh, is uh, 63, yeah, 63, 62, yeah. Anyway, he, he used to brag that he, uh, Leonard Reed spent the night in his bed. You're listening to Nelson Nash on the Cash Manager Podcast. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Life settlement investments have allowed financial and banking institutions to not only buy their equity contractually, but also diversify their capital from any economic, market, and geopolitical risk. It's been part of the billion-dollar blueprint followed by institutional investors. And if you're an accredited investor, you can also now participate in this vehicle with enormous growth potential. You can watch an informational webinar presented by one of the premier organizations providing life settlement investments for number of solutions at cashflowninja.com forward slash life settlements. You're listening to Nelson Nash on the Cashflow Ninja podcast and now back to our interview. What um, if you had, uh, if you could go back to your younger self when you just came out of the Air Force at that stage and yeah. and give yourself some advice for life and for this journey ahead? What would you tell yourself if you would go back in time? Study economics uh, uh, earlier. You see, uh, uh, I have never never failed but one course in my life, and that was economics for the Chartered Life Underwriter designation. Now, uh, adjunct to all this, I'm very proud of the fact that when I was in college that first year, uh, Economics 101, I'm a, a D plus. That's Delta plus, not a Bravo plus, okay? That way I didn't have so much nonsense to wash out of my brain. Men love to have uh, letters behind their names, right? Right. PhD, MD, CRNA, uh, on and on and on. Well, in life insurance, it's CLU, Bryn, uh, Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, the uh, Ed, it's out of Wharton School of Business is where it got started back there some years ago. Now, when I went through the course, it was uh, two years, uh, 10 parts, and one of them was economics. And uh, I'm Austrian big time by this time in my, in my life. Uh, anyway, the guy that wrote the book was uh, a borderline communist. If you extend what he's saying to its ultimate uh, 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 understanding the core beliefs, but life insurance but would business would cease to exist. But you see, I ask, why in the world did you use this guy for economics? And uh, they said, well, all the colleges are using them, and we're a college, so we thought we had to uh, be uh, used uh, as text. Well, Paul Samuelson says this: the government taxes the economy ten billion dollars. Uh, that's money coming into the government. All right. He says the government's going to spend that money and uh, that'll, it'll turn over three times. So that stimulated the economy. Well, on the final exam, you truly said, uh, yes, that's true. But this is also true. Al Capone, the notorious gangster, uh, he steals $10 billion from the American public. Well, he's going to spend the money. That'll turn over three times. That stimulated the economy, too. So, therefore, we should have more Al Capones. <laughs> and MC, you know, they didn't see any sense of humor in that at all. <laughs> <laughs> they flunked me. Well, I took it over and uh, uh, gave them their answers, and they gave me a diploma. Well, uh, we've been here in Birmingham uh, 55 years, and for 47 of those years, uh, we lived over at uh, 2957 Old Rocky Ridge Road. That's where David lives. And now, uh, anyway, uh, we uh, we downsized uh, eight years ago. Uh, we're down to one level and um, uh, a wife size yard. You got that part? OK. <laughs> uh, anyway, I found that diploma as we were uh, moving. It was in a closet facing the wall. <laughs> now, I was going to throw it in the trash can. But David said, I'll oh, keep it. Uh, yeah. Well, I hung it in my garage. So if you ever want to see my diploma, come to my house and look in my garage. There it is. <laughs> That's how much respect I have for that sort of stuff. It's absurd what goes on. But again, uh, that's uh, the puppet masters get these kind of thoughts, these evil thoughts across out there that are totally worthless. And 
learning how to recognize it and uh, get about your life is the most important thing you're going. Now, one thing adjunct to all that we've been talking about here, back in my uh, forestry days, Eastern North Carolina, Miss Smithfield, I became president of the uh, Chamber of Commerce back there in 1960 or thereabout. Well, uh, that meant that I got to select the uh, speaker for the annual uh, meeting. And uh, being an aviator, I picked William Piper. Now, I was about 30 years old at that time. Uh, 29, yeah, 29 years old at that time. Well, uh, he was 74, and gosh, what fun it was to just sit and jaw with him like we're doing now. Uh, but uh, the, one of the messages he got across to us, uh, the, to the group was, he said, you have a telephone, big deal. If somebody else doesn't have a telephone, you don't have a thing. Well, uh, let's extrapolate that. Uh, if you have uh, the greatest idea in the world and you have the greatest method of transporting that message and um, the delivery is, the, is perfect, so forth, but if you don't have a, a, a receptive mind, you don't have a thing. So what we've got to look for out there is people that are searching, people that are hungry, whatever. Let's put it in agricultural terms. Down through life, uh, you run into superior people like that we've talked about so far, uh, and uh, ideas that have come along. And let, by the way, Leonard Reed was the uh, most, uh, he, he had read more than anybody I put, that I know. He, Leonard Reed had no, uh, no uh, diploma from anywhere. Neither did Henry Hazlitt. But uh, gosh, the, the resources are out there, and today, uh, the volume of resources is ma is uh, mind blo blowing compared to what it was back when I was uh, thirty years old. Anyway, uh, let's put agricultural terms. So, running across people like Leonard and uh, learning from people like Leonard, you uh, I call those in agricultural terms uh, superior seeds. Now, what you're looking for is fertile soil in which to plant those seeds. Well. That's great. It's fantastic when those seeds come up and so forth, and you get superior products from them. Uh, brings you great joy and so forth. But here's the thing about life uh, and agricultural world. You, know, you plant the superior seeds, but MC, you're going to run into something else. You're going run to in, run into weeds. Uh, Absolutely. All right. So if the weeds become so big that they choke uh, out the, uh, ro the view of the, uh, of the corn, or whatever the product where you're growing, you've lost everything. Well, learning how to recognize uh, uh, nonsense out there and get it out of your life is, is so important. And that's what people can't do. They listen to absolute nonsense. Uh, there's a little uh, book that uh, I just got from, from a Mises Institute, rather, just uh, the other day. And uh, I remembered uh, very well the author's name, Etienne de la Boutier, Frenchman. Uh, he only lived to be 30 years old and so forth, but the total of his book is uh, The Politics of Obedience. Now, uh, about half, it's about 90, oh no, just a second, 72 pages, I believe. Well, almost half of it is uh, an introduction by Murray Rothbard. Uh, but uh, I remember... Uh, yeah, Leonard quoting this guy uh, years and years ago, but if there ever was uh, a, a place to learn from, it's uh, it was Leonard. Oh, by the way, every everything that he ever wrote, uh, uh, I have a copy of, and it's uh, in a, autographed to me. Now, uh, my son's a pretty good student, and so uh, I have uh, given him all those books, that, that autographed books. FEE, Foundation for Economic Education, is centered in uh, Atlanta, Georgia now. And uh, all of Leonard's books are on the website, and it doesn't cost you a dime. Good grief. That's amazing. I, they, they spend so much time on absolute nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. It, you, have, you have to be focused, yes. especially in, in this environment today. And there's amazing works out there. Um, and these are people's life's works, right? Yes. We, 
We mentioned Leonard Reed. Um, we mentioned uh, John Taylor Gatto that recently yes. passed away, that studied education, that compiled just <laughs> centuries of information on, on education and where, where our current education comes from that you can study and, and, and read on. And uh, you definitely epitomized the, uh, the idea of lifelong learning and learning. And it's just amazing to see you still learning and studying and reading uh, uh, on your on your journey. Um, what are some of the things that you're uh, reading right now? What uh, you mentioned one book, uh, but what what are the things that you're that you're learning and that you're excited about uh, coming into the new year? I've uh, just got started Diamonds, Gold, and War about the Boer War. There, mm-hmm. uh, I'd read uh, two or three others about it, but I particularly wanted to do uh, read this one because of the connection between that. Uh, the, money and war. Uh, but uh, I'm going to make sure that uh, I dwell big time on uh, this little politics of obedience by Etienne de, de la Badier, uh because it is short and the message is crystal clear. Uh, how we knuckle under and obey uh, absolute nonsense and it shouldn't be that way at all. What I've been trying to teach people really is freedom. You really don't have freedom until you got financial freedom. If you're going to be a slave to the banking business, uh, and slavery it is, gosh almighty, uh, just look at what has gone on during my lifetime. You know, uh, when I was uh, a kid, uh, a mortgage was uh, five years, and that was it. Wow. Yeah. After graduating from college, uh my wife and I got married just two months later in August of 1952 and uh, bought our first uh, car. And that was a 48 model Buick, uh, four years old. Uh, 18 months was as long as you could get to, uh, to finance the car. Well, what do you have out there today? Zero down and such. Uh, gosh, you can buy a uh, zero turn uh, 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 lawnmower uh, for uh, seven years, and you don't have to pay a thing the first year. One mattress firm out there gives you seven years to pay for a mattress. Good Lord. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's, it certainly has changed uh, uh, in, uh, in your lifetime, sir. Uh, Nelson, what is, uh, what is uh, from, a, from a legacy standpoint, what, how would you like people to uh, re- just how, remember your message, and what, what legacy would you like to leave? Well, uh, there's the group putting together this documentary just to, uh, to address that particular subject. It's going to be about 75 to, to 90 minutes long, and uh, it's, it's just entitled This is R. Nelson Nash. And so I, I, uh, I uh, hope that it's worthwhile for people to read. We'll see what we'll see. But the greatest thing is watching uh, when you plant those superior seeds, watch, it, watch them coming up. But gosh. There's nothing like it. There's a young fellow up in uh, Massillon, Ohio, about five years ago. He had uh, emailed me and said he read my book, and uh, it uh, fascinated him and such. And we uh, got the dialogue going there uh, through email for a while. And uh, I found out that he was a rising uh, senior in high school, that uh, he wouldn't, he said he wasn't going to college. He didn't think he was. Uh, worthwhile and so forth. Well, I kept uh, feeding him books uh, from time to time. And after about uh, seven or eight different books, on uh, one occasion by telephone, he asked me, why are you doing this? I said, son, I learned a long time ago when you find somebody who's hungry, you're supposed to feed him and you're hungry for thoughts. Well, I uh, uh, did some uh work with the getting him enrolled at the Grove City College, Pennsylvania. That's a private school that's 2,400 bona fide students. Ludwig von Mises Institute, Ludwig von Mises Library is located there. Now, uh, Hans Senholz used to be the professor there. And um, there's a couple of guys, Sean Reitenauer is one of them, that are excellent uh, teachers and Anyway, the the boy graduated with real honors, and he, he's uh, be getting married next week to a beautiful young lady. And so, uh, there's a uh, letter that he, that uh, this young man's father 
uh, wrote to me, and uh, it's priceless. Uh, maybe I can s- send you a copy of it, see what you think. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's it's truly, truly so uh, amazing and very rewarding to see that. And you've touched and impacted so many lives and so many people. So I just wanted to express my gratitude uh, to you for, for what you've done. And especially in my life, uh, just uh, the, I've learned so much from you personally. Every time you speak, I learn something new. So thank you so much for uh, yeah, I thank you so much for putting this information out there. Thank you so much for being a mentor to so many. And thank you so much for coming on the show again. My pleasure. But uh, you got to remember what I said earlier. Uh, you can have the best message in the world, but if you don't have a receptive listener, you have nothing. And uh, so the glory doesn't go to me. The glory goes to uh, you. You listened. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, well, when I see the uh, uh, the things that you brought up and uh, what you uh, the things that I, I think you know, uh, I, I'm co- quite confident confident of that fact that uh, I, there's nothing uh, better than that legacy. It's the group of people that are caught on to what I'm teaching. That is my legacy. Fantastic. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank uh- you. MC Lampshire, the creator and host of The Cashflow Ninja and president of Producers Wealth. And I'm on a mission to help you achieve economic and financial freedom as quickly as possible. I achieve this by integrating the infinite banking concept with real estate investments to increase your efficiency and returns and recapture cash flow that you're not even aware of that you're losing. I share the number one strategy for investors in my holistic wealth creation course, at yourownbankingsystem.com. That's yourownbankingsystem.com. Thank you for joining me again on the Cashflow Ninja. Thank you for all your support. You rock. If you like what you hear and appreciate what we're trying to build here at the Cashflow Ninja, please subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes and share our show with family, friends, and your network. If you're not a subscriber to our newsletter, you can sign up for our newsletter at cashflowninja.com or text Cashflow Ninja to 44222. I'm also posting daily videos on Facebook and YouTube and will live stream weekly starting May 2018. To make sure you don't miss any of the live streams, please like and subscribe to my Facebook and YouTube platforms. I'm also dropping content on Instagram daily. Be sure to follow us on Instagram to get in on the action. I want to thank you for spending your most precious resource with me today, your time. That's our show for today. Until next time, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objectives, such situation and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.